Hi people, it's Archivist here, and today I'm going to be doing a review for Marvel's Spider-Man for PlayStation 4. I haven't done a video in quite a while, but for Spider-Man I had to make an exception because this game is utterly fantastic. I usually wait until the end of a review to give out a recommendation, and I usually specify who exactly that recommendation is for, but for Spider-Man, if you're a gamer, if you own a PlayStation 4, heck, if you don't own a PlayStation 4, go and get one, because this game is worth buying one for. This game is for everyone to try and for some to absolutely love. So let's begin with the story and I will be doing absolutely no spoilers here. I'm just going to talk about how the narrative structures itself and how it's told. So in terms of the quality of how the story is conveyed, it's really up there with the likes of Uncharted, the facial animations, the quality of the writing, the jokes. The jokes are fantastic. I laughed quite a lot during this. Some of the jokes are overt, but others are very subtle and really quite clever. They really didn't, you know, spare any expense on making sure that there was some sharp wit to this. And it's not always necessarily Peter Parker. Sometimes it might be one of the villains who says something quite funny. Sometimes it's J. Jonah Jameson who does this special podcast that's constantly criticising you in really amusing ways where he's always trying to uh, twist things so you seem like the villain. Uh, the way that the villains are structured is really quite impressive considering how many of them there are. I won't say exactly who features in the story, but... It's like this organisation into the side villains who are just there for flavour and then the primary villains who do get really well fleshed out and serve as the primary arc to the story. And you'll find that Spider-Man in many ways unwittingly causes a lot of the threats in this uh, particular story. If there's any criticism really, it's that because you know who these villains are, you know that when you first meet them, how they're going to end up because they are Spider-Man villains. You've seen this before. You just don't know how they're going to go about it. And I'd say that although the story isn't highly unpredictable, the way it treats what I'll call its primary villain is really nuanced and slow in a way that no movie or comic has really done before. It can, because it's a game that stretches over many, many hours, it can take its time to start in, you know, the build-up phase, the conflict phase, and then the crisis phase. And it's all done in a way that you don't question motives, everything's properly created. And you know, you've got um, the side characters like Mary Jane and Aunt May, who, again, serve a similar archetype, although I'd say that Mary Jane has got this complex going on where she wants to prove that she isn't always a damsel in distress. Sometimes she's the one who can go out there. And, you know, in fact, sometimes in the story, you'll see that she's doing something um, where Peter gets it wrong, but she was about to get it right. And um, it gives her more of a purpose rather than just this simple character who needs saving. Uh, you've also got another character who I won't mention at this point who enters the story, which I think is leading up to potentially a series of these games, which was quite exciting. Some of the villains aren't... Um, I guess, fully realised in this, not to say that they aren't properly defined, just in that you can see they are also setting them up for a future series. But yeah, in terms of the overall narrative, it's pretty standard superhero affair, good stuff, but where it really resonated with me was in the way it's conveyed. I mean, we've had plenty of Spider-Man games before, but they've never taken the cinematic nature of that storytelling to this level. The voice acting, particularly from Peter Parker himself, is really um, endearing, it's believable, and although a lot of the game is spent with him being quite carefree, as you'd expect from Spider-Man, when he needs to deliver that real emotional oomph, which he does at certain points, you feel it. I mean, I'll be honest, towards the end of the game there are some moments that can make you potentially feel quite emotional, not just because of what the events actually are, but because of how they're being told to you and the way that Peter is reacting to them. Uh, it's unfortunate that I can't go into too much detail without spoiling it, but it's something that's not, you know, I don't think it twists in a way that no one will see it coming, but it's something that is worth experiencing. You know, if you can't buy the game um, at all, then at least watch it on YouTube to, you know, because it's a story that's worth, you know, being told. 
but it is under you know it's undoubtedly a spider-man story i wouldn't say it takes the character and throws them into some wild innovative direction it stays true to the character which is good in the sense that it is undeniably spider-man but if you're someone who wants something i don't know wildly unique then i don't think you'll find that here so the only thing i can say is that it doesn't take spider-man in a radical new direction that might off-put the long-term fans um, and now uh, let's move on to the uh, traversal mechanics because I usually go into gameplay next but I'm going to split this up into combat and traversal. So swinging in Spider-Man games has been a big feature I think since Spider-Man 2 when they first brought in uh, physics based swinging mechanics where in Spider-Man 2 that old classic you could actually attach your webs to, to buildings and uh, swing throughout the city in a semi-believable way, as believable as a human spider can be. Uh, and then future games would take the outdoor, you know, open-world swinging mechanic, but they wouldn't quite implement it in as accurate or believable as a way. Let's take the Amazing Spider-Man game that was based on the film with the same name, for example. In that game, although you could swing throughout the city, you would essentially shoot webs out into the neververse they wouldn't attach to buildings and it certainly shattered the immersion it still looked quite cool but it you know it wasn't quite right uh, and then you had the amazing spider-man 2 which was after that which did attach to buildings but the momentum wasn't quite where it could be although it was pretty decent but in this game it's sort of a marriage between the cinematic nature of some of those games i just mentioned and also spider-man 2 Webs will almost always attach to uh, an element of the environment. In fact, I could never prove that it wasn't. I just, there were a few points where I wondered if it was attaching to anything, but it really felt like it was most of the time. And also, it's not quite the ultra authentic physics simulation that Spider Man 2 was trying to be. It allows for a little bit of, you know, forgiving nature. For example, if you were to swing very close to the street, the web's length will, without you noticing it, sort of retract so that you don't hit the ground. You will swing past all the cars. So this is a swinging system that, although it is trying to be believable, again, for, you know, for a uh, human spider, but also captures that cinematic feel that you really do want from Spider-Man swinging throughout the city. And it gives you this fantastic sense of momentum when you never, ever have to slow down. If you hit a building, you will instantly start to wall run up it. And even when you get to the top of that wall, whereas in previous games you'd sort of shoot up and then land on the roof, in this game, if you press the X button quick enough, you will latch onto that ledge and slingshot yourself across it, which is actually one of my favourite moves. You can also pull yourself to perch point and then press the X button at just the right time to springboard off of it and also when in midair you can just press the X button to get a uh, zip shot which will give you a very quick burst of momentum. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean although this game does have a, um, a quick travel system you will rarely want to use it because it because it is just so fun you know to swing throughout the city it looks great it feels great and yeah, you can tell how much time they spent on this. Even the webs themselves have a good amount of detail. They're not just straight lines, which they could be. They have that detail, that sort of interlaced webbing throughout them. And you can ratify that if you want to by going into the photo mode and looking closely at the web detail itself. It's absolutely fantastic. And I mean, you could, if you wanted to, if you just kind of felt like playing some game lazily, you could just spend ages just swinging around the city uh, aimlessly and enjoying yourself as you fly through it. But you know what's crazy? Although you will spend a lot of your time just swinging quickly through the city, if you take a second and drop down onto street level or even on a rooftop, the amount of detail they've put into this city is phenomenal. I mean, I can't imagine how long this took. Something that Again, previous Spider-Man games have probably assumed is that, well, we know players are going to be shooting through our city really quickly. We won't bother putting in little details like bins and, you know, uh, stalls on the ground and also, I don't know, benches and realistic grass detail in Central Park because they didn't think they had to because players will just be spinning throughout the city. But Insomniac went to some length of detail here to just make the world believable even if you drop onto the ground. So you can be walking throughout the streets and 
Honestly, this could be a GTA game, the level of detail, and the number of pedestrians that walk about and will interact and recognize you, and the traffic, although the cars don't move super believably, there is, you know, there's a lot of cars, and you can do all kinds of parkour around them, when you hold the R2 button down, you'll move quickly and jump over them. Uh, some of the areas you'll find little distinct features going on, you might find like a street dance session going on, or people playing basketball, it's such a believable world, and all those, you know, although these details don't have to be there, they add so much to the world you inhabit. So when you stop a crime, you feel like you're stopping it to save this believable city. Uh, so that does it for the traversal uh, mechanics. Also, the gameplay itself in terms of the combat. A lot of people have made comparisons to the Arkham series, which is an entirely fair thing to do. Arkham Asylum really managed to capture something special with the way it approached combat where effectively you would build up a combo until you hit an energy gauge and then you would do an execute ability although that forms the core of spider-man's combat it then evolves upon it i mean i've seen so many games take the arkham combat and you know do their own thing but not really improve upon it this is the first time i've seen a game take that combat style and genuinely improve upon it I'd say the first major difference is that rather than reacting to a standard enemy attack with a counter, you react to them with a dodge. So if someone tries to punch you, you dodge out of the way. And then after doing that dodge, you can hit them back. But if you dodge at just the right time, you'll throw a web into their face and then they can't even fight back. So you have this very um, easy window to attack them with. And, you know, it gets even more layered then. If you manage to dodge a bullet at just the right time, you'll throw a web into someone's face, and then you can, if you get the upgrade, do an instant takedown. Gets even more layered still, because you can knock people up into the air in this game and do aerial attacks. And then when you're up in the air, you can build extra energy and use that extra energy to do more instant kill attacks. And instant kills do this really cool cinematic... Um, camera style where it goes into slow motion sometimes and shows you taking the enemy out the layers of you know fighting in this combat system are absolutely incredible i'd say that you don't have to use all of the abilities at your disposal in order to win because there are just so many what i found myself doing initially was just relying on the raw combat the dodging the striking the web shooting but um, eventually I realised how reliable gadgets could be. And the gadgets in this game, they don't ever break what you'd expect from Spider-Man, but they are quite varied nonetheless. For example, there's the spider drone where you shoot out a little robot and it will shoot enemies. There's an electrified web where it hits one enemy, bounces to a bunch of other enemies and they're all stunned so you can hit them. There's the impact web, which is super satisfying, where you hit, you shoot this single web, which knocks enemies flying back and sticks them to walls. You've got the standard web shooters, which can web up enemies. Uh, you know, there's a few extra bonus things like the gravity reversal thing, where basically it creates a zero gravity environment. You can see enemies in the air, and then you can hit them after that. Some creative stuff like that. And again, it never really breaks the immersion that you're still playing as Spider-Man. These feel like gadgets that he would use, and it's really fun. Um, <laughs> I'd say that when you get to full power, which I think for most players will be after they've completed the main story, combat can be a bit easy. I have found some combination of attacks that are pretty much unstoppable. I guess um, this is also countered though by the fact that enemies do hit quite hard. So although you do have the ability to dodge enemy attacks and you can you know, have a flawless combat encounter where you dodge everything, if an enemy does hit you, they do hit you for a pretty decent amount of damage. And the thing is you can heal yourself with your energy gauge, but that of course means sacrificing your ability to do those instant takedowns. So it's a bit of a, do I have to go on the defensive here or do I wanna save it up so I can instantly take down enemies? I thought it was interesting though that you can't do the instant takedown on tougher enemies, so the bulkier characters or the whiplash enemies, you can only do it on the stand enemies, which I would have liked to have been able to use it on the tougher enemies, but whatever. You've also got various different suits which serve the purpose of having, well, 
cool different appearances but also the suits themselves have different abilities the standard suit for example can just refill your energy gauge over time the iron spider suit is very cool where it can shoot out the mechanical arms and you attack with those and they go through like shields and stuff you've got what else you've got the velocity suit where you can charge your enemies all kinds of different stuff to make the combat more varied the thing is, it's almost like prototype in that it doesn't force you to use every ability you get. It's more like it's just giving you this box of toy toys to experiment and see what your style of combat is and roll with that. It's not about making you use everything. And I think that's where Batman was a bit different in the, in the Arkham games. Different villains would require different... Uh, powers to be used on them whereas in this you can kind of stick to just a few abilities and get away with it there's also the graphics which wow just how did they do this when i saw the trailers for this game one of the things that actually struck me when i see games like this is there's no way they got the frame rate right in this we all know it you know it was going to be 30 fps there's no way you could have a game this dense at 60 on the playstation 4 but I thought it would be all over the place. I thought you'd see like spikes from 20 to 30 constantly. And although the graphics, um, you know, they are, they're extremely impressive, uh, the frame rate rarely dips. I mean, sometimes you'll jump into a whole crowd of characters in the city and my brain's going, this is when the frame rate dips. It just doesn't. It's just like, I don't know how well they've optimized this. It's like... The guys at Insomniac, they have spent so much time making sure that they've got that stable 30 FPS. And I say this quite a lot, although obviously 60 is preferable, I've personally got nothing wrong with a consistent 30. A variable 30, which is to say like 30 to 20 or even 30 to 45 going up and down all over the place, I don't like. But getting a game to look this good with pretty much zero aliasing, at least within the mid-range, and um, you know the, the texture detail... And the speed of the movement and the number of characters on screen at one time. To get that to a reasonably consistent 30 with only very rare dips. How? I don't know how. I mean, I just I just cannot believe that even now as I play this game. How are we seeing this with a dynamic resolution, which um, and I'm going by Digital Foundry here, uh, never goes below 1440p, so it can go close to 4K. How is this a consistent 30? I cannot believe how well they've optimised this game. They deserve a reward for that alone. Because to have a New York City that is this well detailed with textures, this high resolution, with this many physics simulations as well, that's another thing. There, there's, you know, there's a very detailed physics simulation. If you throw a bad guy into a wooden plank, the, blank, you know, the plank will shatter. How do you have that a consistent 30? I just don't know. But I am nevertheless incredibly impressed by it and also just you know as i mentioned earlier with the story points the uh, character models are great and so are their facial animations it's just i am in awe i am in absolute awe i have so much respect for studios that take the time to optimize their code so that it's consistent and that's what they've done here you know uh, i've heard people call for a 1080p 60 mode i god if if that would work i'd be amazed but I'm just happy with what we have here. I've been playing on the PS4 Pro, however, because of my capture card limitations, you'll see a 1080p image here. But even then, as I was playing it, I could tell basically what you'd expect from a regular PS4. Uh, the game still looks fantastic. It, you know, it's really, I guess it's the image quality that really impressed me. It was just so flawless, so clean. And the draw distance, okay, you know, I could go on for ages about this, but I was really blown away by the visuals in this game. The trailers look great and the actually seeing it running on my screen in real time. It's just absolutely amazing. And also just a just a hint if you do get the game, use the photo mode when you're doing an action pose. It looks like something out of a movie. It's just so good. Okay, so um I've talked about the story the gameplay and the graphics. The lasting appeal is usually something I always like to consider with my reviews. So there's a fair amount to do and the story will last you about 12 to 20 hours. The thing is, I'd say, you know, it, I'm personally, I've been playing this since Friday and I've been playing it pretty 
pretty much non-stop, hence I'm making this review because it's just captured me so well. But I am getting very close to 100% in the game, so this isn't the kind of thing that will last you as long as a really in-depth RPG. But there's a good amount of length to this, and the thing is, even if you do 100% the game, you'll always have those random crimes to go and fight for. You can always try and improve your scores in the challenges, like the base challenges and uh, the various things set to you by side characters. You can always do that. There are side quests as well to bulk out the game. And like I said earlier, it's an entirely valid thing in this game just to enjoy swinging around the city. That can genuinely occupy your time. Uh, but, you know, it. this is the thing. I... When people talk about how the gaming industry is moving towards multiplayer gaming, I always sort of squirm at that because I hate the ideas of games like this disappearing. But at the same time, I cannot deny that I personally invest more time in a multiplayer game than I do in a single player game because it's more replayable. But for a single player title, you know, more so for a single player action focused title, there is a lot to be getting on here with. I'd say it's probably most relatable to uh, a standard Far Cry game in terms of content. Actually, I just want to um, say something there, <laughs> making that comparison to Far Cry. Uh, a criticism I've heard of this game is that it relies heavily on open world tropes that Ubisoft typically employ when the map is scattered with things to do and there's too much to do. I find this to be an utterly ridiculous criticism of any open world game. Never, never say there's too much to do. Why would you ever say that? You know, if you're paying for a game, you want it to continuously provide value for you. Why would you want it to end? So I personally will never give the criticism of any game for giving you too much to do. And this game does give you a great amount of stuff to do. Maybe not everything it does is you know, as exciting as the main story. But once you've done the main story, you've done the quality content, you might want to just a little bit more, and that means relying on more stuff which is maybe of lesser quality. And I think it's great that they provide that. Giving you more and more to do, um, you know, in my personal opinion, is absolutely fine. And I also think the Ubisoft style of covering the maps of thing to do is perfectly fine. Not everyone's going to want to do that, but it means that if you really enjoy the game, it gives you that you know, massive stretch goal to tap into if you want to do everything. And, you know, there are a few rewards for doing that. They are a little silly, but, you know, you might want to go ahead and do it. I think the only people who might dislike that, who look, you know, people who are like serial completionists and don't want to have to do too much to get that platinum, personally, I just like having a lot to do in the games I pay for. So, yeah, I, you know, directly opposed to criticizing it for relying on that typical scattering the maps of thing to do trope i actually condone it for doing it considering how much this game that you know does that's unique and well refined and such high quality i don't blame the developers at all for wanting to tap into just a few you know tried and true mechanics that we know work from other games so, you know, again, as I started this review, I will say it again. I highly recommend Marvel Spider-Man to superheroes fans, you know, people who love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a no-brainer. To gamers in general, it's a must-try. For people who like open-world games, God, you know, the list could go on and on. This game is fantastic, well worth the price of admission. I just hope from the bottom of my heart that this game does well because it's one of those games that you play, you finish, and you say to yourself... This game deserves to do well.